Fancy lad. Fancy lad. Fancy Podcast lad. fancy lad. Fancy Podcast lad. gonna talk my friends. Fancy gonna share a thought. Lad. Gonna have a laugh. That's fancy what I thought. Lad. Fancy lad. Fancy the fancy lad. podcast. Fancy lad. Fancy, fancy lad. lad podcast. Uh, yeah. And we are back. Oh, yes, indeed. We are back on the Fancy Lad podcast. That's right. Mm-hmm. And let me reiterate that mm-hmm. one more time. Ooh, hit me, Big Zo. The Fan C Lad uh-huh. podcast. Mm, baby. Mm-hmm. You gotta have that cast, man. You gotta cast. Oh, my God. Honestly, tell me about it. I mean, if you're not casting it, mm-hmm. what the hell are you doing with your pod? What's your business with the pod if you're not casting it? I know. It's like I'm looking at you with your mm-hmm. pod and I'm thinking to myself, do right. you want your cast? I mean, do you want your pod to last? Mm-hmm. If you want your pod to last, you got to have it cast. Yeah. Pod. pod. That is what they say. They've been saying it so much and it has actually been starting to fucking piss me off. Oh, my God. Don't fucking get me started. All right. Uh, okay. Oh, well, you know, I'll just start a little bit. Then oh, stop. Okay. All right. That's fine. The amount of times. Mm-hmm. A homeless man approaches me on the street, and yep. I have a crisp new $20 bill, Ka-ching. and I'm about to hand it to him, uh-huh. say, sir, you could use this more than me, and then I stop dead in my tracks because he says to me, if you want your pod to last, mm-hmm. you got to put it in a cast, hmm. and then I, what? Oh, no, go ahead. And then I say, you know what? On second thought, I'm going to keep the crisp 20. Oh, man. Now, do you think, what, do you think he's talking like? Full body cast or, or what? Dude, I do not know. He mm-hmm. didn't get that far because I said to him, listen, Buster, uh-huh. if you don't shut the f- up, oh. I am going to put your arm in a cast right now, okay? Mm-hmm. Because I've been practicing medicine mm-hmm. illegally and I could use the practice. Oh, yeah. You got to, you know, you got to get those hours in where you can. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. It's like all those dental school students. I feel bad for all those dental school students. I feel bad for any student in general. You know what? Me too. Anytime people are like, oh, I'm in school, I'm just like, ah. Anytime people ah. are like, oh, I'm trying to better myself with ah. a higher education. I'm like, dude, why don't you just go fuck yourself? Oh, man. Why don't they? I don't know. Too fucking busy. They're fucking head in a book, oh, apparently. Man. <laughs> Nerd. Dude. Mm-hmm. What? Did you? Are you okay? Did you just cough? Sorry, I have. I think I'm coming down with something. You should get that checked out. Yeah, that's probably fine. I don't like books, as mm-hmm. you know. Oh god, they're the worst. I don't trust them. Why would you? And I won't allow one in my home. I mean, that seems like the safest bet. You know, who knows what those books are up to? You keep them out of your house. You mm-hmm. have to worry about it. Mm-hmm. Unless mm-hmm. you go to a library, then you're. <laughs> and then you're kind of fucked. Yeah. You know, there'll be a lot of books around there. Going to a library mm-hmm. nowadays yeah. is, I'm trying to think of the most dangerous thing in the world, and I can't right. off the top of my head, but it's pretty much just like uh, going to a, uh, a nail party, and oh, you're God. dressed up in all balloons or oh, something geez. like that, you know, oh, which God. happens a lot. It does kind of, I mean, it, more frequently than you would guess, because I would guess it would happen zero times, mm-hmm. and it happens. Oh, it definitely happens. It happens. How do you think I thought of it? I mean, it happened to yeah. you? Yeah, oh, yeah. Now, were you were you dressed as the balloon, or were you one of the nails? I was the balloon. Oh, you were the balloon. I was the one big balloon. Oh, so you only had one big balloon. Yeah, I was inside of the big balloon. So it was like a bubble boy situation? A little bit. Were you sick, or were you just, just, for, the, just for the party? Just for the party. Hmm. And I should have read that it was a nail party. Yeah, that would have been useful information to Instead have Instead of just assuming it was a bl- one big balloon party? Well, you know, anytime anyone invites me to anything, mm-hmm. I assume, you know, naturally, that it is one big balloon party. One big balloon party. One big balloon party. I know. Yeah. That balloon family is hilarious, though, oh, on that my show. goodness. Yeah. Oh, the balloons? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the- I love that one. Starring um, Ron Howard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah, the balloons. Yeah, the balloons. Yeah. Yeah. There's always money in the Banuni stooned. Exactly. Yeah. But, you know, I'm starting to think to myself, you know what? Maybe these books might have some sort of hidden knowledge in them that I don't know about. You're talking about the books that everyone's reading. Yeah. And I'm assuming right. I'm assuming all the books that people are reading are like money for dummies, how mm-hmm. to make money if you're like a big big dummy. Uh how to not let people know you're mm-hmm. a big dummy enough so you can make money. Financing for big pieces of shit. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm guessing that's the only reason why I haven't hit struck it gold yet. Mhm. But I did make a post, uh, a sort of grassroots campaign to oh. get Matt Tomasello nominated for Sodi today. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, because people all want to get behind a good cause. You know? uh, absolutely. So I figure the more uproarious response they see, the more they can't ignore it, you know? You know, it honestly is really annoying that he wasn't... That, why, why can't they nominate him? Well, you know what I think it is? I think it's They're also... Scared. No, you know what I think it is? I think it's next to impossible to find a photo of Matt. Mm. And that's a problem. Yeah, where did that come from? Was that a screen grab from the ex from the uh, rig, rid, well, what was it? Ripley's? Um, no, that was from Zach's personal stash of Matt photos. That's hot. I know. That's hot. I know. Yellow exit. Zach Pap. Number exactly. one crunch boy. Number one crunch boy, as they say. Yeah. In the biz. Yeah, hopefully Matt Matt should get uh, nominated. You know, in the very least. It's been my dream to at least get a Teddy Award. A T. Eddie Award. Mm, that would be nice. But once again, you got to go there. You got to rub elbows. You have to you know, be in front of the camera for Rhino to shoot a quick... Skadoosh. Well, you know... Yeah, you, you, you know what a picture sounds like. Oh my god, there's blood everywhere! Someone call an ambulance! Yeah, so I know what it's like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, hopefully, Matt, I don't know. I don't think they're going to go for it. No, no, they're not. But Matt <laughs> did say to me. Yeah, what did he say? Look what, out what say? for 2025. 2025? Yep. Why? I think that's when he plans on peaking. Oh, jeez. Yeah. We got to figure shit out. Well, we got to like... Tick tock goes the year clock. Technically... Mm-hmm. Oh, we're getting technical. We have five years because he didn't specify... Beginning, end of the exactly. year. Exactly. So we can milk him. Mm-hmm. Oh, and we're going to milk him. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're going to milk them. Fuck I've been trying to figure out how to milk Matt for years. Ah, uh, dude, I think... Ever since I saw this one movie, Meet the Fockers. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> and the cat poos in the toilet. Right. Well, I always thought it was weird that every time, you know, Matt sees you, he goes, I have nipples, Big Zo. Can you milk me? I tell him, no. I don't... I haven't figured it out yet, okay? I'm, listen... If I knew how to milk you, you bet your bottom dollar I'd be milking you right now. Oh, my God. Buster Brown. Man. We could start our own Matt Milk Company with the amount of milk we were getting from him. And you know how many sweaty and deranged fans out there would love to get their... their Breakfast cereal. Oh, my God. Covered in Matt Milk. Covered in Matt Milk. Oh, my goodness. Almost a little bit excessively more than you need. Yeah. Like, oh, that's like... That's heavy on the mat milk. Yeah. Like, you've covered the cereal, but they keep pouring it. They keep pouring it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm guessing a lot. Oh, tons. It's, if, if, I, if I had to guess. I'd say dozens to, like, a baker's dozen, at least. Well, you know what? Maybe the money is not in skateboarding. You know, maybe, I hate to say it, maybe it's time to put our efforts somewhere else. Uh, like, way up, boss. Um... Pfft. Have you thought of money laundering? I have thought about it. And okay. I tried it uh, the other week, actually. Mm-hmm. So I went, I was going to drop off my laundry. Yep. So I figured I'd give it a go. And uh, I lost 50 grand in the washer. Did you put a Tide Pod in there? I put I put 50 Tide Pods in there. Oh, fuck. 
That's way too many Tide Pods. Dude. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. They're all goopy and sloppy now. Yeah. Well, did you try counterfeiting money? You make fake money and people think it's real. Oh, uh, yeah. And then you put some uh, some dookie on it and put it on the, the street and watch people pick it up. Yep. Mm-hmm. But you tie it to a fishing line. Yeah. So then they're trying to pick it up and then mm-hmm. you fish it over to you and you pick it up and you go, that's my dookie. Yeah. <laughs> and you start <laughs> You start eating sniffing it. it and licking it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so you're familiar. <laughs> yeah, okay. So counterfeit money. Yeah, no, I know. No, I'm talking about maybe some commercial work. Oh, commercial work. Yeah. Yeah, I always thought about thought we could do commercials for people, but I was just always afraid that they wouldn't want to actually give us money for it. You know, I think that's a reasonable fear. You know? I don't know what it is that makes me so afraid of that. Yeah. But it just makes me scared. I think we need to build up a resume mm. first. You well, know? yeah. I think we need to mold ourselves after someone who's already stepped in this sort of realm. I think these people need to smarten up and just realize they got to pay Big Zone Tom Tweak. Preemptively. Everyone. And by these people, I mean everyone. Yeah. All the companies just be like, oh boy, get your checkbooks out. I agree. I agree. Yeah. It's not enough that we're just knocking at their door. We got to, I don't know what we got to do. We got to put the pen in their hand or something. Yeah. Or even if everyone just gave us like, uh, a penny or 10 cents everyone in the world okay we've been through this mm-hmm. a million times mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. i agree it's a great fucking idea to do mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. but in the meantime i think we should try to get someone on the podcast that's actually successful that maybe started in a similar realm of making skate videos and then realized that that's little stupid juvenile pathetic kid shit and actually grew up and decided to make something of themselves to start a career. I guess we could start with that, yeah. Yeah. Well, why don't we take a quick break and then maybe just see who like that we can get on the horn. Oh, dude, I'm going to grab some Clown Trees brand beer. Dude, that is a great idea because I have not even had one Clown Trees brand beer yet, and I'm getting a little thirsty. Dude, we're 13 minutes and 35 seconds in, and you haven't had a Clown Trees brand beer? Dude. Don't let them know, okay? Oh. Don't tell the fucking sponsors. Okay. I sure. want this gravy train to keep coming. Fuck. Okay, well, let's go get some of that gravy. All right. Uh, yeah. Life as a southern sheriff can be pretty taxing. Taxing on the mind, taxing on the body, and taxing on the soul. That's why when I'm feeling my most decaffeinated and dehydrated, I reach for a Mocha Sombrero. Mocha Sombrero. A Mexican style chocolate stelwit. With additions of coffee Mocha and vanilla. Alright, now I'm trying to do the script Mocha here. Alright, you know, if you're just gonna keep doing that. Mocha. Oh, Jesus Christ. Sombrero. Well, it's got coffee. It's got coffee and it's got vanilla. I don't care if you're doing the back. It's got coffee and vanilla. And it's a stout recipe. And uh, the malt flavors. The the sweet vanilla. Uh, Jesus. Oh, my God. You know, this is very distracting. Very distracting. You know, if you want to know more about Mocha Sombrero from Clown Shoes Beer, why don't you go ahead and visit uh, clownshoesbeer.com. Go on now. Get it. Uh, yeah. And we are back. Oh, yes, we are. And mm, that was a fantastic break. I know. And I'm glad. Oh, man. I already cracked in my Clown Shoes brand beer. Oh, man. I cracked into mine, too. Damn. Oh, well. Well, I mean, we'll throw a crack in post right here. Mm, and then we're going to take some more sips of these. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's actually a good crack. You do that one more time. Oh, that's good. At least this is a delicious. Double dry hopped Zen Guard in New England IPA by our sponsor Clown Shoes Brand Beer. Mm, I love that one. I myself have the Bubble Farm IPA by the same Clown Shoes Brand Beer. Still great beer. Mm-hmm. Delicious. But anyhow, you know what? Let's get to our guest. The Bub Daddy. Yeah, the um, Bub Daddy. Let's get to our guest. Yeah, introducing our very special guest, legend Colin Reed. Hello. Hello. There you go. See, people at, listening at home, you got to hear him say hello, so you know. That he's here. Otherwise, the they, podcast. Say, they say Colin Reed's not really there. He didn't even say hello. I'm phoning in from the beach right now, apparently. Yeah, we really appreciate you taking time off of your little vacation there. 
I know the surf actually looks pretty fucking good right now, bro. Yeah, actually, in real in real life, I'm actually uh, chiming in from you know my Snowden slush outside Brooklyn apartment. Uh, but so close, I, I was in California on the weekend, um, soaking up some rays. So I, I was out there for a job, and I'm I'm currently here uh, isolating, doing my thing until I get tested and uh can reemerge like a butterfly from the cocoon were you in la yeah yeah i figured because you're i mean you seem to be a pretty well-to-do man from your website so you uh, must be going there for big time hollywood uh when is this coming out um two weeks yeah two weeks okay well so i guess it won't be out then but i was working on a music video for um uh a band from it's one of those that you know you're always surprised when they put out that they're putting out new music um Mm -hmm. but uh, you're still psyched just because of you know the music that you listen to in the 90s and in the early 2000s of theirs okay Um, we're gonna we're gonna take a few shots in the dark here okay all right i'll start nirvana (laughs) (laughs) how'd you get it so close how'd you get it so fast good job damn six cents Great work. Really nailed it. I don't know how I did it. I So Tom can't even guess. No, I, want, I mean... I, I wanted to hear what your guess was going to be. It was going to be the Beatles. That's pretty damn close, too, because Paul close. McCartney subbed in. Close. I mean, that's what I was listening to in the 90s. I guess Kurt was, like, on a vacation or something. Yeah, I don't Paul know. said, hey, boys, check this out. I could be your new Cobain. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, a little, a little known fact is that I'm actually, you know, the lead singer of the Foo Fighters, he, uh, he had used to be the drummer for Nirvana, and that was Paul McCartney. See, that's where people always get confused. Yeah, so, you're close. <sighs> so you're not at liberty to say the actual band that it was. No, I can't say it right now, but it'll be out eventually, and then I'll forward it on. It's a big, it's like a big, uh, stupid, goofy kind of teenage adventure video. So it should be fun. Well, I'm looking forward to figuring out which band that is at some point. Yeah, fingers crossed. Blind Melon, uh, Jim oh. Blossoms, mm-hmm. or damn, I can't think of who sang Breakfast at Tiffany's, but. One of those three, fingers crossed. Who did sing that? Oh, whatever. Yeah, anyway, we'll we'll yeah. figure that out at a yeah, later exactly. time. But yeah, uh, mentioning big time uh, music, music videos. Music video. You made a Radiohead video. Yeah. Yeah, in 2017. Which is pretty, pretty tops. I mean, yeah, it was a good much video. bigger than that? Yeah, that was that was actually the first video I ever did. Um, so it's basically been downhill from there. I don't really know what I have left to look forward to. Uh, yeah, that was the first one I did. And, um, I really had no experience making actual film production things outside of skateboarding. Uh, that's all that I kind of knew how to do other than being an editor and stuff like that. Um, so I was just terrified the whole time. Um, and every moment sure that I was on the precipice of just crashing and one being revealed as a fraud and two, uh, just the whole project exploding all around me and, and, you know, being a terrible failure. Right. uh, Somehow it worked out and I had a, you know, amazing experience crew that, that helped make everything Mm -hmm. actually work. Like, cause you know, do the technical things and and know the things we had to do because I knew nothing. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I was sure that, Soon people would find out I had no idea how to direct. And then um, until I kind of realized partway through it that from making skate videos, I like already kind of knew what I was doing. Uh, yeah. especially making a skate video, like the kind of videos that I used to make and the videos that you guys make, a, a lot of it has to do with like prior planning before things. Mm-hmm. So even if it's like a, a dumb little gag or transition or, or moment, you've kind of thought about it before and thought about how you need the camera to, you know, point at things and what you need the person who's skating to do to make the joke work the best. Uh, so it's, it's kind of the same skill set. Um, and I found that it kind of carried me through the project. And after that, uh, I, you know, I thought, okay, maybe I could kind of make this be a career. Yeah. Uh, directing things. Um, and, you know, I thought, yeah, cool. I got this radio head video under my belt. It's just going to be like, smooth sailing from here on out. Like I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get started to get a bunch of work. 
And then I didn't hear from any work again for like years, basically. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it turns out that just doing a one-off thing, even though it was well received, um, it doesn't really matter because it's, I don't know, I guess it can, but it didn't for me. So I kind of had to, to jump back to, to the starting point and work my way up again from there. As to, so cut to now, I'm like, you know, now I, I know what I'm doing, so to say, and uh, I am getting regular work. Yeah. But, but how did you get linked up with Radiohead in the first place? I'm assuming Tom didn't just reach out to you. The homie Tom, you know. Uh, no, after after Spirit Quest came out, I started getting hit up. Um, kind of offers to pitch on things and some videos and stuff like that. And uh, I, I had no idea what I was doing, even on the pitching process, which I've they don't tell you, or and you'd never know otherwise, but like three-fourths of the directing job is – pitching and, and, and putting together the ideas and making treatments for them yeah, uh, and trying to sell people on your ideas and putting together them in, in a way that uh, you can show the whole video on the page. Basically. Right. So I had no idea about any of this and nobody told, nobody told me what to do or what I should be doing. Um, and I, I pitched on various things and they were all just like basically ideas written down in text documents with maybe a few photos. Yeah. Sent over. That's actually how I won the, the Radiohead video, but uh, um, the pitch deck. Yeah, but it was just a piece of – it was a miracle that I got it because it was just the same thing. It was just like a text document, mm-hmm. and it was had nothing to do with what I would – you know, it doesn't look anything like what a, a deck Because usually it looks like a slideshow. Exactly, and I just didn't know any of that, you yeah. know? Um, and uh, so that's part of why after that video, I still – my career, like, didn't go anywhere because I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what the career was, you know? Yeah. So it was a long time before I learned those things. It was kind of a bunch of – learning the hard way from the mm-hmm. bottom up. Um, well, I'll tell you, you know, you're looking at old Bigzo here. I got pipe dreams too. Okay, buddy. And, um, yeah, I started working for this, uh, this video production company just so I could see how all this stuff was like actually going down. Mm-hmm. And I did haven't had anything actually come to fruition whatsoever, but the other intern that worked there ended up, uh, working for Jankum and filming this Camaro edit that's actually will be out by the time this podcast is released. But he said the exact same thing to me. He was watching me and he was like, yeah, it seems like you already know how to direct just by filming this edit. He's like, it's the yeah. exact same thing. Yeah. Yeah. It, the skill sets, they totally uh, share so many things, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I find from the way people become directors is a couple ways. Uh, one is sort of like, the, the very old school way, which is working your way up from the very bottom, you know, like starting as a runner and then into a PA and then uh, maybe becoming a grip or working your way up to an AD and then, you know, being a writer and finally working up the chain. But what happens a lot, you see now people kind of step in from the side. So a lot of um, art directors and then fashion photographers are become, have, have become directors the last couple of years. They just kind of take a step over. People know them for their work and style. And so it's easy to sell themselves like, oh, okay, you know my style. Uh, I'm just going to make that in video form. Um, yeah. And so a lot of music videos get made, and they always have been made that way because um, a lot of times an artist, a musician would be like, oh, I love this photographer. I love this art director. Uh, I just want them to direct this music video. Or, mm-hmm. um, and uh, that's kind of how they their start. And a lot of times I find that – I'm not very into their work whatsoever because there's no real concept past the visuals. Um, and I'm the kind of, I'm more of an atypical director that I kind of don't give a fuck about how nice things look or I'm just very rooted in the concept and just driving that all the way. Um, I love, I like pretty things of course. And, uh, like, you know, nice art direction and lighting and stuff. But for me, I'm always more interested in the base, concept of of some new thing i haven't tried or or really seen before um and i think that's something that like skate filmers have a way better grasp on and it's that people who make more conceptual skate videos um like fancy lad videos so and uh, i i've been meaning the guy yeah sent me a copy of that finta video i've been meaning to check it out i saw some (laughs) clips on the uh, ig but that seems like it's going to be a good video have you watched that one yet yeah yeah um my friend connor did a uh he played it on a projector on the um wall ball court at uh cooper park here yeah and so it was a nice it was a nice socially distanced 
video premiere. Just a couple of people came, but it, it was nice and, and it was before it got colder. So, so it was really nice. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I, anyway, onto the video. I mean, I think oh, yeah. the video, like, it's got such amazing ideas, super amazing ideas. And um, it's, he actually like in the video, he, he has like a, like a whole slate. that's like a love letter to spirit quest. <laughs> Saying, like, yeah. Thank you spirit quest for, for being made to make inspire this video. Um, and uh, so it was super flattering. It felt great to see. And watching the video, I can kind of see how some of our ideas influenced the ideas that made it into that video. Um, and, but then he like made them his own, you know? Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, actually I, I told him this, that video that I just did in California, there's a, there's a little segment of that video that um, kind of sparked an idea in my head that I then used to f- make the foundation of this or use at least within this music video that I just directed. Yeah. Uh, so it's been kind of fun. Like I influenced him and yeah. then now he made this piece of work and now it in turn influenced me. So it's, it's a, like a, uh, a it's nice an intellectual circ- game of tennis. Yeah. 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 It's, it's a nice circular thing. And um, I mean, honestly, it, I think it has, it's very much a homey video um, just cause it's, it's uh, you know, the range of skating goes from, it, it's very homey for the most part. Yeah. Um, but it's kept aloft by the ideas in it. Mm-hmm. Um, so where, you know, people wouldn't be watching necessarily for, you know, the, the so-called level of the skating. Uh, it's still really watchable just because there's cool ideas happening throughout. Um, yeah. However, it leads up to the guy's own part. Um, I don't know. I don't know if he pulled the JT and gave himself last part, but if he did, it's okay because it's it, it you know it deserves it. Yeah, dude, Dino, his part is just overwhelmingly the best. Yeah. Um, so he kind of you know the best ideas made it into his own part, but past that, he's also just an in, insane skater. Yeah. You know? Yeah, he's doing like you know fakey five oh tray flips out and create you know he's super tech he's got the ability he's got as, the as ability as, as well as the creative mind exactly so he's got the ability that helps elevate it so it's one of those things where that one part i think is going to be the his own part is going to be the one that sort of like is remembered uh, well i can't wait to see it you know i wish that i had gotten a chance to watch it before this podcast so i hmm. could actually say something about it but um, be nice but, you know, as far as the spirit quest goes, I think, yeah, conceptually, the thing that links all those three videos from what I can tell is the um, the ingenuity behind a lot of the skating and filming. But, you know, in the spirit quest, yeah, you got a lot of stuff. I love the, the thing that first I thought of that I love about spirit quest is the very the, because I always used to be obsessed with the repetition variation in editing. But the uh, the two lines and split into the screens and just the, uh, you know, very seemingly, you know, starting out the same and becoming different. Uh, there's just so many clever like bits in there and all the transitions from, you know, the animals to all the stock footage. It just it's seamless, you know, it's 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 perfect. Um, so that's this is why I'm saying. I think that I can tell why you've been much more successful because your video looks really good and ours tend to look really bad. But see that to me, to me and maybe commercially, commercially, you know, that's a, that matters, you know, in, yeah. in the commercial work. But uh, as I said before, I'm a person who kind of doesn't give a shit about, that type of aesthetics. And that's why I think the fancy lad videos, I mean, to me, they're the best thing in skateboarding currently by far. I mean, they're so, yeah, yeah. They're so, and I've said that to you guys before. I I think they're the best, the best videos and ideas and everyone is shocking in, in its own way and uh, lovely and hilarious and wonderful. And to me, those are all the things I I care about because you know, one, I can't, I, I couldn't give a shit about like things being super pretty in skateboarding. If I did, I'd watch, Ty Evans videos or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and at this point, there's, I mean, it's impossible to be surprised by technical skill in skating. Yeah. You know? Right. It's still that's insane, cool. but it's, it's just, it's, you're just like, yeah, of course they're doing that shit. Yeah. People, people, the level now is just absolutely 
unbelievable. It's hilarious. Yeah. Like whenever I like actual children, like there are twelve year old children now that are doing stuff that twenty years ago would have gotten ender ender in any video, and yeah. that's a throwaway on Instagram. Like you know, it's it, it's washed out. You know, so I th- I think that sort of made skill almost ir- irrelevant. You know what I mean? Um, un- uh, except for the point that you can use it to push a new idea. Yeah. So but I feel like there's still not a lot of videos pushing new ideas. I feel like outside of the three uh, aforementioned stuff. videos, you know, it's, it's, they're few and far between. Yeah. Yeah. It's harder to do. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't get any easier. I'll tell you. No, it doesn't. Cause every time you have a new idea, that's one less new idea that you can possibly do again. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, and maybe that's why I, qu- I stopped making the skate videos. I'm like, well, I, you know, what else is left? Mm. Uh, um, I do. Have, I have, I have things that I want to do now, but, uh, I'll get to them eventually in skating. But, um, do you ever think of maybe having people do, do tricks on airplanes? That was, that was, uh, so in that video I did before spear quest Tangu, that was like a, a, a transition idea I wanted to do, but it got, it got the cut. <laughs> it got yeah. Left. That seems like it'd be extremely difficult to actually uh, take off. So the concept behind Tangu was really, you know, we are sick of skating these spots at the ground level. We yeah, either need to go up or, or we down. need to go down. Basically, but nothing's, it, we're not going to same this, okay? Yeah, basically it was the same thing. It was like, well, <laughs> it was like a now what thing, you know? It's like, well, people haven't really skated up here. People haven't really skated down here that much. So I guess yeah. let's just do it. And if we're going to do it, then we have to do it all the way. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, that's that's one of those things like as like as skaters, you know, skaters see spots everywhere. And especially like if you're taking the subway all the time, you know, you're seeing spots that are like, you know, pretty much unobtainable for the most part. You're like, that spot looks sick, but, you know, it's in the station. We can't skate it. Um, Or like if you're on the rooftops, you know, at a party or whatever, a lot of times you'll see something be like, that's actually a sick spot, but can't skate the roof, you know. But to actually yeah, yeah. go go through and and uh, do all of that, especially the subway skating, because that must have taken a lot of uh, time to be like, all right, like yeah, years, shit, we missed we missed that train. We gotta wait another seven minutes to try that again. Especially filming from the train too. That must have been tough to coordinate. Um, it was tough to coordinate. They were done a couple different ways. So I'm trying to pull up this guy's name. Okay. Uh. While we're on the subject, before we get more to that, there's this guy, uh, James Craven, a British guy who's made a couple videos, a series. Um, and one of them is called Islands, I think. And then the rest are like that. I don't remember the names of the rest ones. Maybe one's Mountains or something. It's I think I, I saw Islands, I think. I haven't heard of them. Oh, uh, Jim Craven. And they're, um, they're great because they're the same way, but spots kind of out in nature. Yeah. So they're really, they're really cool. Um, I would say check those out. It's kind of along the same line of like, well, what else can we skate that hasn't been skated before? Yeah. Uh, it's done in a very atmospheric and pretty way, but in a way that suits itself because it's, it feels almost like a travel or nature documentary with skating. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of like, I guess a little bit like spirit quest in that way. It seems like everyone had a theme of nature in that video. Every. Yeah. Segment, yeah. Yeah. You know. I guess. Mm-hmm. The thesis of that was like, you know, we would always say that people skate like animals. Um, and some, some, some of our friends, I've always just been obsessed with nature and animals and, um, uh, always thought about the parallels and some skaters have super recognizable ones. Mm-hmm. Um, like some people skate like a mantis or a bat or, uh, and so it was just same thing, taking that idea and it's kind of like, okay, well, let me just explore this and see how, where it takes me. Um, and that's what led to spirit quest. And, um, I mean, really, I think the only reason that spirit quest is still remembered today, I think I'm past the ideas. Uh, I think I just kind of lucked out that my friends were really good at skateboarding. Yeah. Um, because it, it, I I think it, it had the ideas, which to me made it really successful. But I think the thing that helped make it more uh, universal 
and, and easier to get people interested that might not have been interested in the conceptual stuff was the fact that, you know, I had parts with Bobby Worst and, and Taylor and Rocky and uh, very talented skateboarders. So it had both the really good, more standard skateboarding yeah. in it that was paired with the concepts. And I think that's what has led it to become you know remembered and talked about now which is i never thought this video would talk about four years later you know i made this still for me this is very much a homie video i mean th- th- there's no one's in it that's not my good friend or people that i just happened to skate with there were you know no one paid us to do it it was just me i, I had a full-time job the whole time mm-hmm. and i just made this around that and uh somehow it's become this thing that's remembered and and influences other stuff which to me is is unbelievable you know yeah well you know i've obsessed over skate videos obviously and mainly because it's the only thing that i've actually considered that i've done successful in my life and you know i love over like over intellectualizing skateboarding i know people hate it because uh you know it's just dumb skateboarding that shouldn't be taken too seriously but you know it was a groundbreaking video it was just, you know, it's an art form in itself and there was nothing like it before it. And there probably won't really be anything else like it after unless you start to make a skate video again. Well, if I made a skate video again, it wouldn't be anything like it either. Yeah. Because I've done it and I'm not interested in doing it, it again. You, know? you checked off that box. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I feel that's what you guys do. You guys do. You somehow every new video find the way to uh, repeat the feeling. Yeah. Make the same feeling, but push it even further. Um, which is, which to me, that's what makes it, makes them so incredible. Uh, is that with every video, you know, after I watch them, I'm like, well, how the fuck, what else could they do? And then the next video, there's just more ideas that happen. Um, and, and so, and it's, it's, it's so incredible that, that there's more room to play with skateboards in yeah. ways that have never been thought of before. Well, I very much so appreciate you saying that because I feel like no one's actually put it into words before, but I completely agree with you. Um, yeah, we always just say, call me crazy. This one's the best one yet. But no, yeah, but uh, having it different, but I do try that exact thing to have each one be different too, even with just putting it together. But, you know, yeah, still have the same feel, which is... uh, Hard. It's really hard. It's it's really hard, yeah. But it's a a slow evolution of the actual, you know, it's fun to watch. I mean, if you go and watch them all in a row, it'd be, it's just like a fun thing to just see how it, like, the idea evolves from like a little seed. It's a great binge telling you that that should be your next binge forget yeah. house of cards right you gotta what stop else? that at some point right yeah oh yeah you gotta end it yeah i mean if you're still watching <laughs> house of cards you you yeah. really you should wa- check the news and, and check the news from two years ago and but not yeah watch it. you were talking about the uh the radiohead music video and it made me think of um the same it was the exact same story that spike jones said it's like you know you must look up to Spike Jones a little bit, but he was saying the exact same thing about directing the Sonic Youth video. Um, it was one of the ones off Dirty, where it has the skating in it with like Jason Lee, and they're like playing at the house party. But he was saying the exact same thing. He's like, "It's my first time directing. I thought that you know everyone was going to be like figure out that I was a fraud." Yeah. Um, and obviously started with you know video days and rubbish heap. So I'm guessing there's big things in store for you, Buster. I mean, I mean, it, this year would have was supposed to be like my my breakout year. Didn't quite happen. I was my first. I was supposed to shoot my um my first feature film this spring. Um, we were fully funded. I had an incredible cast in place. We recruit up. Yeah, I was in uh, I was in Florida um on location uh, in the production house doing location scouting in. February, March, and I was flying back to New York for final casting meetings. And um, I flew up early March and uh, for, for some, some meetings. And I had another meeting in like six days. And I remember I was like, I'm, I'm going to be slick. I'm going to leave my suitcase here. Uh, 
because I have enough clothes for it for then. I'm going to go back to Florida to a location scout. I'm going to fly back for that meeting and then bring back the suitcase. Um, and I never made it back to New York mm. uh, <laughs> because the world ended, right? Right. right. Um, and then the friend's house who I had been staying at, he like COVID moved out of the city. Uh, he sublet his place. It then got sublet from there. And then somehow from that, my suitcase got like, my stuff got thrown out, lost like half my clothes. <laughs> And it was just in that little span. Um, and I didn't make it back to New York until end of June, you know? Um, so this year, it's been an interesting year. So it's been hard for sure in the film world. It's been really hard to... Yeah. Stuff. I mean, I've managed incredibly. I mean, I never thought I'd be able to make this much stuff this year. I thought it, this whole year was going to be a wash. But mm -hmm. I got to do uh, a lot of stuff this year. I mean... I did like two things, I guess, pre COVID. Um, but then I've done like four or five music videos and one commercial since then, um, you know, since lockdown started and a couple of remote directing things, which is interesting and frustrating. And uh, it's, it's tricky and hard, but um, you can set up a workflow that's really safe and, and manageable. Uh, you get tested a lot. <laughs> you get your yeah. nose broke all the time. I'll say that. Yeah. Is the film still on the table? Uh, I so, you know, if and when, but we'll. Yeah. Who knows. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's one of those. They say like development hell is the word they they call the process of putting together a film in pre production, and I found out it's the perfect. It's hell. Like. Yeah requires such an incredible accident of fate in order for a film to get made. There's a 10,000 ways for a film to fall apart. And if you get all the way there and it's about to get made and then it gets shelled for some reason, it, they usually, it's, it, it, that's it. You know? Yeah. Well, I love uh, watching a movie and looking up how much the budget was just to be like, how does, how is the budget that much money? Oh my God. It, it, it's it's that's what i used to feel like and now it's it's always like they made it for that wow yeah. they uh, only made it for 10 million dollars <laughs> that's incredible. a steal it is i mean money in film it just like for example this video i was doing um was it the battles video oh no we, that was last october no um every, every video every project you'll ever do in film there's not enough money there's not enough time mm -hmm. ever it's like a gas it expands to film the volume of the shape it's in Right. Yep. Um, and there's never enough. Like this video I just did, when I got the brief to pitch on it, they said the budget's 30000 And so I, I pitched an idea and I said, okay, here's my idea. Here's my treatment, but I need like $70,000. So if you want to do this video, we got to get $70,000, which was a bold move. Um, mm -hmm. But somehow it worked. And, uh, but, and so we got it up to 55. Um, they got like a product placement. Uh, partnership to get up to 55 which kind of made it possible yep um and you think if you watch the video you'll be like how the hell does this take fifty five thousand dollars? you know yeah um, especially because as skaters we've made all of our stuff for fucking free right exactly because right. you just make it yourself in your garage you go out and film it on your camera everyone's just hanging out and doing it mm -hmm. uh, but it's like there's no one thing that makes things expensive it's just everything adds up it's just people and time People and time, that's it. You know, you have 20 people on set. All of them have a day rate. Boom, that's it. It's gone. And it's not like, oh, we could cut back on this. We could cut back on this. You, you've already cut back on those things on your initial bid. And from there, you're scraping them away further. And it's always pinching pennies, sliding things from one department to another to make them work. Um, I've never had a project where it was like, plenty of money. Great. Yeah. Never, never. Too much money. Don't know what to do with it. We should buy... Uh... Oh, let's do a scene where we burn the money. Exactly. Oh. We should buy a house and explode it just for sure. just because we have all this money. Yeah, let's explode a house. Yeah. I mean, it's like everything. It, it's just the small things. It's a million tiny things that add up. Um, and uh, I mean, I've done plenty of videos for like 10 grand, 15 grand range. And um, they almost are easier in a way because you know from the start, okay, we're going to do this with like three people on the crew or something, you know, like, um, but when you, the more money you have, the more things you need to have. 
and the more things you have to have and, and the more stuff gets eaten up and the less money you have, you know? Yeah. Uh, so it's like escape. I got, I, I got asked to work on, um, a larger skateboard company's, uh, video series, um, with that was set to come out in a couple years from now. And it'd be interesting on the one hand, because I was offered what, what I, in my past, I would have thought, holy shit, that's so much money. I can make whatever we want for this. But now I'm like, how the fuck can we make anything for that amount of money? Mm. Um, and I think it's because my, I, you know, your ideas, like I said, I've done the VX, like I've done all those things and the type of ideas I'm interested in skating now kind of take a little bit of more to make. Yeah. Because I just want to go bigger with ideas. Um, mm-hmm. and not, not in like the Ty Evans bigger and gadgetry. I was going to say not in the, yeah, right. Sort of not, way. not yeah. in the, yeah, right way, but just like things it requires like having to build stuff. Like, you know, for fancy lad videos, um, you guys are building stuff nonstop, right? Yeah. Uh, you're building all these insane contraptions. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, if you, if someone like threw a, a, a number at you of a budget, you would start to think, Oh, what could I build with that? You know? Yeah. And the ideas themselves aren't like, they're not better ideas or anything. They're just different and scaled and, you know, they're scaled up or scaled differently mm-hmm. and allow you to explore ideas more fully. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to do that because it'd be fun, but at the same time, uh, boy, I wish you could name the names of any of these, uh, I don't know. I know. Ventures, I know. You know? Yeah. Well, if, and when the things come out, then, then, then I'll tell you, you know, uh, yeah. or I could tell you guys when we're not on a podcast. Yeah. Uh, that'd be nice too. I mean, you could just tell us and, and we could just <laughs> yeah, yeah, loop we it out. Loop back I'll, in after this, um, I'll but, ask you after. Yeah. 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 Um, and then the other part of me is like, well, shit, should I just like, should I just be done with skating uh, and just have continue to have fun? Cause I'm afraid that if I start working in skating again, I'm going to start enjoying skating less again. Um, hmm. I thought you were going to be worried that you were going to get sucked back into this no money making venture mm-hmm. that is skateboarding. I mean, that too, that too. Um, and that's part of what made, what makes it stressful and make me like it less, you know? Yeah. As it is, I have no responsibilities in skating other than just to skate as much as I can. And that's great. It's the I best. Mean, imagine if Colin Reed mm-hmm. worked and developed a Matt Tomasello part with Matt Tomasello. Oh, I mean, so that would be crazy. Actually, I actually told, I, I like, I've, I, I've like DM or I've like commented on Matt's shit before. Like, dude, I want to make something with you so bad. Like, so yeah, it would be so incredible. Of course. I would love to. Yeah. And the with, end product would be amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, but it is scary. To, it is scary to get sucked back into the world. <laughs> like, it's my back. It's a disruptive process for me. Ooh. I can't film anymore. I was going to say. I cannot film fish anymore. I That's can't. from filming, right? Your yeah, bad well, back. A confluence. I used to be a furniture mover and all, and just editing and filming for my whole life. My back's just fucked. I've herniated discs and I threw a bunch of physical therapy and exercises just to keep myself going. Um, I'm in pain 24 seven. Like I told you guys earlier, my life is kind of designed, designed around not sitting down. Yeah. Cause that's, it just leads to pressure and pain and stuff. And, uh, I have to, tr- I, you know, I try to stay super active and exercise and stuff like that to keep, keep my back in shape from keeping it not too bad of pain to like overwhelm me, you know? Cause then from there, I just, once the pain, it starts building, I like sink into terrible depressions and, and stuff like that. So it's kind of a whole confluence of things. Um, why I'd be hesitant to, you know, to, to dive too deep into skating, making things again. Cause it's like, it's a destructive process in my body. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, and it's hard to be like, Oh, you could just have someone film it and you could like direct it. But like, I don't really, you I, have those tight fish how? eye angles, you know? Yeah. I mean, I guess my, my next project, they just would not have fish eye angles. Right. It would have yeah. to be totally different. Um, Unless you could get a drone with a fish eye that you could wear with a VR setup and then it's like you're crazy. actually there. They have, they have the VR like drone racer pilots. They get mm. crazy shots. They do them for car shots and stuff. Yeah. They're insane. Um, I would be worried about like cutting off skaters ankles and stuff, but eh. yeah, it will be okay. Yeah. Um, as long you as it's a clean cut, you don't even want to cut off a wheel. I mean, come on. 
I mean, the head's one thing. Right. But that's not where the action's going on. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, I mean, cutting off, it would be cutting off a skater's head in the vein of like Steve Barra. Getting yeah. his head cut off. Oh, yeah. the end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that's a conceptual part in itself where he made all those fake spots. Yeah, I know. I was going mean, to say we were just not, we that, were just talking about that is a concept having you know? a, a budget to build owned, stuff. If he'd like, I feel like if he had owned it, if, if he, he had, had said, it, "Look at if exactly," he had owned it, it would have been sick. Exactly, he like, but yeah. he tried to he tried to make us like take us all for fucking fools. Like we to weren't going to notice. Like we but weren't going to notice. Like, if he had framed it like this, look, I just had surgery. I'm just. You know, I could barely have any time to skate. Fuck street skating. You always get kicked out. What's the difference? The spot's the same in the end. I made this shit. It looks cool. You know, maybe people would be like, you know what? I respect that. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't, but, you know, if you try to pull a fast one, it, it, that's it. Oh, oh. They, they, they wouldn't even have to say that. All they would have to do is throw in a few shots of him, like, building it, one of shit, the things. I, yeah, and they'd be like, oh, cool. Yeah, so yeah, he yeah, built all this shit. Owl and, and yeah. yeah. I mean, it's kind of like... DIY part like parks make up tons of people's clips and videos now, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like, what's the difference? Just own it. Yeah. It'd be. I mean, the 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 idea of building like a ledge or a handrail at a real street spot is hilarious and insane. <laughs> um, and if you would just do that blatantly, it'd be kind of sick. Like, damn, there's a sick ledge here. It'd be sick if there's a handrail after it. Yeah. And just building a handrail <laughs> on public property, it's awesome. So yeah, it is. Um, so it's, yeah, it's kind of like uh, the injury that he had caused him to do that. Kind of reminds me of um, well, we just interviewed. Uh, the editor of Label Kills before you. That's a deep cut. One of my favorite videos of all time. Yeah. And I don't know. Kids don't know do, anymore. Do you remember the Mike V kids. section where he's pushing was half the, the time? Was that the Yeah. It was it's yeah, in, the all push. It's in yeah. black and white and he's pushing just half the time really hard to that Rollins band song. Yeah, is that the is that the one where he like jumps off his he like kicks his board and it just like fish tails yeah. around and like yeah. walking? Back on, yeah. we call yeah. it oh, the bottle cap. We call it the bottle cap. Yeah. We we coined the name for it. Great yeah, move. Fancy lad, great move. Yeah, fantastic move. Yeah, and I mean, Mike V is sick as fuck. Yeah. Like, but he yes. filmed all that because he broke his foot on tour and like just just sawed off the cast when they went to go film him. Yeah. So so that was the that was the the bit they were gonna film him sawing off his cast so everyone knew hey. He has a broken foot. That's why he's just pushing around for half of his part. But he sawed it off before they got there. So there is another example of the injury inhibiting the skating and creating a conceptual part. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of conceptual parts, um, Go Miyagi's Instagram has been amazing recently. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's always a, it's always a pleasure but, to see. Right, he's like exclusively skating this little rail in a pond. Yeah, that thing is crazy. What, he, why is that there? He keeps doing new tricks on it. It's <laughs> I know. Sick. How is it a spot? He's like, Phil, he just keeps making clips at the spot, mm. and they're all absurd. Yeah, he, he's, I mean, obviously one of the best ever, you know, in terms of conceptual skaters. Yeah, oh, making yeah, absolutely. a lot with very little. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just, the video yeah. nasty part is, uh, yeah, I, one of my favorite parts of all time, I think. Yeah, he just has an absurd... You know, he's like the best balancer in the world on ground rails. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of the spots he skates are really shiny too. I've noticed. Very shiny. Very. You know, and that's like, and that that just makes it like that. That just makes it part of it. Like almost all the round rails he skates well, are he like waxes, that. Sh- he waxes the rails or like goos them up. He hems them up. He he, he waxes. Yeah, he like he 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 waxes and goos them up. Mm-hmm. To make mm. them to make them even shinier. You gotta. There was a there was a um like a bonus Far East Skate Network little edit that they made once where it's just him talking about how he's addicted to the smoothness of round rails. Yeah. And it's like sort of comparing like sex to, to the feeling of grinding round rails. He loves those curves. They yeah. should try some astro, astro glide on them. Yeah, he loves them. Yeah, also he's a uh, uh, go doesn't uh he doesn't really like pinch his, his 50s. He does them the old school he way. He does them the old school yeah. way. Yeah, which is which is insane cuz okay. the rails that he's 50ing are usually have have multiple turns and and yeah. you know, loops in them. 
Yeah, yeah. I would have thought that he would have uh, been a pincher. Know, been a pincher yeah. or carved out a groove in his truck to do it straight middle. You know, mm-hmm. well the rails might the, the the rails themselves may have carved out some grooves in there. So you might you might have some fifty grooves that are kind of like lock in plates at this yeah, point. Yeah, he's got some fifty grooves by now. Yeah, probably. Maybe the rest of his board is pristine, but that's but the gro- it's all about the grooves. So the Mandible Claw Company, that's just your video production company. I mean, right? it's not a company. It's just, I don't you know. You got a t-shirt that with a logo. That means it's a company. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So there's so these shirts, um, my friend, he was my roommate at the time. Uh, when Spirit Quest was coming out, he's like, man, I'm going to hustle. Uh, and so he like, he's like, so with DVDs, I uh, should sell shirts. You know, people would buy them for sure. I'm like, well, I'm not going to make shirts. He's like, well, I'm going to make shirts. I'm like, okay, knock yourself out. You're responsible for dealing with these things. So he made like a fucking thousand shirts or something absurd, way too many. <laughs> yeah. And um, he's like, don't worry about it. I'm just going to, you know, I put in the money. I'm going to make the profit. This will be my deal. I'm like, okay. And uh, he like did them for a while. People bought them and they petered out, leaving him with like hundreds of shirts in our apartment. And in the meantime, I like, got married i moved out you know um and my friend finally was like you know do you want it do you want these shirts <laughs> <laughs> i'm like yeah I, I fucking told you um and he's like well any that you sell can just be your money now i'm like all right so he gave me like a two gigantic crates of shirts um and so i like tra- i like kept on selling them on my website for a little while and um, it was just so annoying. And then they stopped. And I still have, I have so many crazy. I've like, I've promised to send friends a bunch of the shirts in there. I just haven't gotten around to it because yeah. this has been after, it'll, it'll be my late Christmas gifts, you know, sending out. Well, I was going to say, feel free to send us a shirt. But, you yeah. know, if you already got a million to send out. You know, oh, send me, yeah, yeah. Send me, send me, your, um, send me, I should probably have more left so just send me uh, an address and, and a size and, and i'll uh, sizes after this and i'll send over a grip yes um, the whole gamut for the whole crew that's what i'm thinking i mean if dude if there's enough i just my wife is just furious at the existence of these shirts still mm-hmm. <laughs> dude and, i mean that's kind of like i i like i don't have laundry in my place and my car isn't running right now so i haven't been able to do laundry and yeah. i'm i got like one pair of socks left you know i'm like down so having like two crates of fresh teas somewhere that's like a dream for me right now well i got this was this was the first this uh, we moved in uh in october to to this apartment and um my my wife's one line she's like it's having laundry my like that's it we're having laundry because it's it's a a nightmare especially this year like laundry we're not fucking doing like all right and um, so my first ever place with, with laundry. So it's, it, it's, it's a game changer. It re- sure. Dude. Oh my God. I, I dream about it. I'm like, man, I wish while I'm yeah. playing video games or something, I'm like, I wish I had like a load of socks in the, the wash right now. But because I of was that, getting I, something I, I, done. I also like threw out a ton of my clothes because yeah. it's like, well, I can wash things now. Yeah. You don't need, <laughs> you yeah. Know? You don't need like a hundred pairs of socks. I don't have to get down to like my, my 30th choice shirt or whatever yeah. you know it just doesn't get there so i'll just lose them you know say what you will about the fancy light house but that mm-hmm. is one of the best things about it is that the the washer dryer combo yeah, yeah i know because i've i've carried in about what three or four new washer dryer combos at since least. he moved in there <laughs> yeah, at least and yeah. you know what i've i've never used them <laughs> you'll have to throw in a load sometime yeah one day i'm gonna come over there i'm gonna throw a load in there you guys aren't even gonna know so what do you what what advice do you have for you know us here who are at the bottom, and we want to climb to the top like you? I don't think you guys are at the bottom. I think you guys are at the top. Oh, nice. Yeah, of skating, which is a dead end job, <laughs> and you know yeah, that. Exactly. That's why before, I left. And that's why I've you know before I, the internet. Yeah, it would have been awesome to be doing what we're doing now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, internet changed shit. Yeah. I would have loved to have made a million dollars off CKY like Bam Margera. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would have loved to make a million dollars off Spirit Quest, but uh didn't happen. Um I mean I don't have any I don't have any secrets. I've like been 
poor forever too. You know, I'm not, I'm not balling at all. I'm struggling really hard too. Uh, yeah. Music videos you don't make money on. Commercials you make money on, but they're super hard to come by because I'm still at like, you know, I'm not just getting a ton of commercial work. It's super hard. You're pitching against, I did a massive pitch um, uh, last month or what month is it? Beginning of this month and I didn't get it. It was like a full, a week and a half of full-time work just on making this treatment for this commercial pitch. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. a whole team of people at the production company like work with me trying to get this pitch. And uh, we were talking about treatments. It was an 85 page long treatment. Um, it was a beauty. I got to say. For a commercial? For a commercial, for a commercial. Wow. Um, and uh, how, how many, what, what, what double space, triple space? What are we talking here? Font well, size. Are we talking 13, 14? It's not like um, a manuscript. It, it's, mm-hmm. It's like an audio, I mean, it's, well, there was audio visual actually, because we had references of like music and, and sound design stuff that were, that were hyperlinked in, but it's, it's basically describing every element of um, a piece of work on the page. So it's got uh, storyboards, it's got, uh, you know, reference stills and reference videos. It's got sections on everything conceivable on mm-hmm look and feel and the shooting style um, and the, the wardrobes and the setting and the, the production design and the, um, the action and the stunts and the narrative and then on the edits and how, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So it's the entire, you can read this thing and then you've already seen whatever the finished product will be. Mm-hmm. That, that's what it is. It eliminates any guesswork, but didn't get it. And uh, that's, you know, a ton of work with not with no no yeah no reward that's at all. What, that's what most of directing is. It's mostly failure. Um, pre production failure. Pre production failure, and uh, generally most of the stuff you pitch on, you don't get. I've gotten super lucky this year where I've won most of the things I pitched on in terms of music videos, but I guess I've sort of fallen into a, my niche or something. Um, but, uh, commercials, like I, you know, they're super tough and, and I did one small one this year. Um, but still not, you know, one thing this year that pays meaningfully is not enough. You well, know? hopefully playboy paid you pretty well. Uh, n- I mean, not, not a, like what a commercial, not well for a commercial, you know, mm-hmm. um, I guess they're not what they used to be. <laughs> it was actually, it was a fun project. It was just like a bunch of, we, that was just like, basically event like heightened event coverage that we were doing. Um, but, uh, it was cool. Nude people and things. Yeah. <laughs> so what was it like filming our friend Spike Lamy do that one trick in tango? Uh, you oh, you know Spike? <laughs> yeah. Um, what did he do? He did it. He did like a dump truck. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's- he, uh, he did it. He did it. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, Spike. It was so funny. After that video came out, I, I met him for the first time in New York. And he just like immediately started pulling up all his footage on his phone and showing yeah. me. Yeah. He's an interesting fellow. He, um, I, fuck, I haven't thought about that dude in a long ass time. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been 2012 or something. 2012, I guess. Yeah. This dude we'd never met before. He was like a friend of a friend from from someone in Florida and he somehow ended up like tagging along with them and like, just like staying at my house for a long time. <laughs> and then we had other guests that were coming in from out of town, like people that had planned to take trips there mm-hmm. and they were coming in to like stay. And then we're like, Hey dude, like, Hey Spike, like it's been fun, but um, uh, you know, um, time to bounce, need the vacancy, you know, for the other people who are coming in and he was like, I'm not, dude. It's it's cool. I won't be in your way. <laughs> and we're like, we're just like, no, no, dude. Like, you're not. No, no, no. Like, uh, we, you know, we need the room. Like, we have two people right now coming to stay that have been playing this trip for a while. So, like, it's been rad. Um, but like, sorry, like, uh, you got to kind of find a new place to stay. Yeah. Um, and he's like, nah, dude. It's cool. I'm good. I'm uh I'm not you know I'll, I'll make myself scarce, and it was insane. It was like it was like out of a sitcom thing. It was like it was like a sitcom moment. And you had to say no, you're not getting it, Spike. You're not getting <laughs> it. And the thing is, we failed. He ended up like still staying. <laughs> he like poisoned our brains somehow. 
and uh, <laughs> got stain. Um, I think and, you'll be uh, happy to know though that he did pay it forward and he did host me and Tom. So yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. No, he's a good dude. He's a good dude. Um, and that was the skate my skate house days, you know. But it was a thing like he wasn't the only person staying. There were already like three people staying at my place or whatever, you know. And yeah. he is like the guy tacked on. Um, and it was one of those things where it just ended like a full fucking house for a while. Um, yeah. I think the deal was he had gone to New York without knowing anybody and without planning a place to stay. And we had just somehow adopted him into like, yeah, cool. It's, you can crash. Well, it's a skater code, you know, it's a skater code, of course. Um, yeah. and, uh, yeah, he did that. He did that Yankin, um, large Marge Yankin. I just wanted to give him a yell exit real quick. Cause quick. I thought that was, that was funny that, uh, he happened to be in the video. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think the deal is that he's from Florida. Yeah, that's his deal. Now okay, he lives. So, yeah, now he I, lives in some connection like that. He was friends with a Florida friend of mine. I, I grew yeah. up in Florida, and so um, you know, he's from Florida. Florida. Now he lives in Canada. We're already in the state together. You know how it is. Yeah. Did you have a lot of videos before Tangu or Spirit Quest or those? Yeah, I had a couple. You are they're they? All, they're all just homie style, you know. Yeah, they're not at the same level. You'd say they're just different. I don't know. My first video was pretty hilarious. I think <laughs> it was pretty funny. It was just called mandible claw. Um, mm. and it's just a, it's pretty, it's just fucking super stupid with tons of dumb jokes and, and stuff. It's got concepts and it's weird. It's not on the same level, but again, I think part of that is like the fact that maybe the skating wasn't on the same level. So it didn't elevate it itself further, but, uh, right. No, it, it wasn't anything. It was just a, a big, it was just like, a par- party skate house video with a bunch of jokes and, and weird things in it, you know, but it wasn't, it wasn't like a, 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 so a masterpiece or anything. I mean, that mm. seems right up my alley. Well, let me see. Let me see when I send those shirts, I'm going to see if I have any, any uh, DVDs. I'll send one over. Oh, yeah. hell yeah. That would be oh, awesome. Yeah. Hell yeah. What kind of videos got you uh, psyched when you were younger? What made you want to do more, uh, the con- conceptual style of making skate videos as what opposed in, to just what inspired to, you. Yeah. Where's your inspiration come from? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I like the skate. I, I started skating in like 2000, I guess. Um, I'm 32. Um, so when I was like in eighth grade or whatever, Y2K um, seven, seven, eight, yeah, yeah. That that's when I started skating. And, uh, so it was all that era of videos, you know? Right. Um, but the the owner of the skate shop where I'm from, um, Teak Leaser, he was one of those guys. I was always like, this is the shit that's cool, you know? Um, so he would show us all the awesome old videos, um, like, you know, the old real videos and uh, like the old One, blueprint videos. You know, and, 101. And yeah, all the old cool stuff he would show us and mouse and, and everything mm-hmm. so that um, – well, that being said, I still, of course, I mean, that my era was the early 2000s. So all that shit I loved, like, you know, at the time, um, you know, sorry. And yeah, and, yeah. But, you, but you had a place where you could actually go and see some skate history, exactly. and which isn't time, isn't is not is very rare for people. Well, now you can watch it. Oh, so now like, you can watch anything you at want. At the time that didn't exist. And no. if you hadn't uh, like if you didn't know about those videos and you did, you still you even if you did, you wouldn't have access to them, you know. Right. So he was just at the shop. He could just put stuff on and show us cool, cool videos. Um, what was the first video you ever saw? The first video I ever saw. I don't remember. I don't remember. Um, I thought first, you were going to say Mac Motti. The first video I re- I don't remember the first video I ever saw. I remember the first video that we would watch like every, like we watched rel- religiously was real to real. So I think that came out in 2001. So that was one of the first, it was one of the first videos that we would put on and like watch every day before skating. Yeah. Um, that Nate Jones part, Nate Jones part. Nate Jones, the yeah. part um, yeah. The maybe, Gons, the Gons part set to that, uh, the, spoken word song. Yeah. yeah. The name so of this good. poem is Rick McCrank. Like, yeah, <laughs> super, super sick. Um, and I, I always like that about the crooked videos. Actually, I will say that I think that those are some very the epitome of lo-fi conceptual videos done well. As far yeah, as at least Narnar nar, naughty, yeah, yeah 
I, well, you I, know, the, the crooked videos always reminded me of early, like, real videos. Almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? It just seemed like, it's just like, yeah, oh, like, they just kind of like went with this. It felt like nonfiction era, you know? Yeah. Just, yeah. And that's yeah. a hell of a, that's a hell of a Huff part. It's a hell of a Gons part. It's a hell of a cheese dip. Kicked out of everywhere, too. That's one of my favorite Gons. Kicked parts. out of everywhere is amazing. Yeah. In that one, I remember Gons, he, like, ollies over a, a bicycle, like a bicycle. Like he like wallies onto some like over waist high ledge and then goes over a biker somehow. Yeah. I remember that. Head. Like lands on his head. And, and then he uh, does it. Yeah. Then he does it again. And he, then he does uh, it. Finishes he the line with the, uh, off or something. But yeah. One where he just wallies up and lands on someone's head. That, <laughs> I don't know why I always remember that one, but, um, I love though. I mean, I love, um, you know, old stereo videos and, uh, in terms of, I don't know, my, I guess my conceptual stuff probably came from just thinking it's funny. Not, I, I can't think of any like skating references. Uh, I mean, like the skits that Spike would do, you know. Yeah. The old girl chocolate video skits. Um, but I always, to I mean, me. Those are inspiring just because it's, sorry to interrupt. Oh, I was yeah, they were inspiring, but to me, what I kind of like to doing is have the skits also feed into the skate parts, you know? Mm-hmm. Like not have it be part part skit. Skit, part, right. Part, skit. Um, but to have the skit itself be a skate part, you know? Yeah. And and somehow find a concept that lets you do cool skating but also having its really apparent, you know, through line of what that ever that idea or concept is and kind of weave that into the video. Um, yeah. That's kind of similar to something that we did where, you know, for, especially for uh, FL uh, final chapter, FL four, uh, FL4, final chapter, whereas like typically you were pulling a lot of footage from movies and stuff, you know? But we decided to like film a bunch of like skits for it and then essentially kind of just took bits from those skits, you know, and I feel like we still kind of do that. We'll have like a full idea and kind of do the whole thing, but then only end up using like little tiny bits of it because, yeah, you yeah, don't need the whole that, thing. I feel like so amazing would the, like from your videos. That's one of the best parts because you can tell there's these little glimpses of an idea in there. Yeah. And they're thrown in there totally unexplained. You know, it'll be like a one second shot from like some insane, you know, you can tell it's a bigger set piece type idea. Right. That took a lot of work to build and come up with everything you're doing, but then that's the only time you ever see it. Right. And the beginning and the end are never in there. So it's kind of left. You're just like, what the fuck was that? And <laughs> yeah. then it just keeps going. Yeah. I, I love that. I love that so much. I think that that was actually more effective in Secrets of the Clown Box. Yeah, I think, well, for that sure. was um, that was inspired. Like the whole idea behind that was actually inspired by the CKY videos because, you know, they would watched... just throw a flash of crazy shit at you. Exactly, right. and I watched. And you know, there's more. I watched yeah. those videos religiously growing up, and I didn't realize until I watched the I got the box set and got the CKY documentary. Yeah. That was for diehard fans only, where they have like all the skits from like uh, Bam's part and jump off a building. Like they they give you the full skit that they filmed, right? Yeah. And yeah. but but then you watch jump off a building, and then you see it's just him and Brandon, uh, you know, punching each other in the face with those southern accents and all that mm-hmm. shit in their cheeks, right? I'm coming down to foam roll. I talk to you guys. Oh, nice, dude kind of foam roller you got there is that a chirp wheel no it's just whatever black thing foam thing that you got offline that's like that's similar to mine i think mine's orange so yeah we've been chasing bam for quite some time he's been kind of our white whale yeah him and gons actually we did we did sleep at bam's house we did but he wasn't there (laughs) i used this i used his shampoo conditioner too yeah i slept in bam's bed yeah yeah. Bucket list. <laughs> yeah, we used his his purple toaster that burned hardograms yeah. into the toast. Mm-hmm. That's real. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, wow. uh, uh, yeah. I, I, I got to I got to to do something with Gons a month or two ago for that for that skaters vote thing. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Um, oh was, yeah, I saw that with the guns and Tony Hawk. That, that yeah. was super rad. Yeah, I met Tony um, Hawk like like ten years ago or something. I I, I used to um, uh, film stuff for the Ride Channel when it first started. Mm-hmm. Um, so I met him then, and uh, it was cool. And I didn't bother bringing it up because I knew there was no way he'd possibly remember me. Yeah. Um, have, have you tried uh, casting? like huge skaters like that in your uh films you direct like music videos and stuff yeah like how harmony corinne would cast like gons Mm -hmm. i've cast homies for sure but i don't cast the the super famous ones i just like put my friends who skate or maybe you know taylor naraki he was in the background of radiohead video the i thought yeah i've had friends pop up in, in various things i've done there's um in the battles video there were fuck who was in that you know razo yeah, Razo uh, or Andre. Um, there were a bunch. Yeah, there's there's a bunch of skaters, and the, yeah, it, it's one of those things that uh, you know. The, I, I don't think I maybe I'm just not friends enough with the most massive skaters. You know, like I'm yeah. I know like famous skaters, mm-hmm. um, but the guys that I actually hang it ha- hang out with, they're like they're more like you know East Coast famous skaters. <laughs> yeah. The one, the ones on that that in the '90s would have had good careers, but now they also work at you know building sets or or whatever. Yeah, well, it doesn't sound that bad. Well, you know, if you ever well, need, if you, it's not bad. But right? you know, I mean, it's like you know how it is. Like skating yeah. can't make a living really unless no. you're unless you happen to be one of those people who luck into. The, the lifetime Nike deal. Or, right. And all the top sponsorships from the energy drinks and everything. Exactly. exactly. Everything. Yeah. Well, just so you know, if you ever need any uh, cheap actors, you get, you're welcome to hit up me and Big Zo here. Or if you ever need any voiceover work, you know, old Tom here does voiceover work. So if you're ever looking for low paid, we're talking very low paid. Very low. Very low paid talent. Well, I you mean, know, the, you know the, where the, to I, get us. Yeah, I mean, fuck, I'm even below paid on most things. Things I usually take, I mean, I like, I eat into my rate again and again so I can get more, so I can get the video made. Yeah, well, we're talking, we're talking low paid slash no paid. Yeah, I've, I do stuff for, I've done videos for free too. You end up cannibalizing my whole budget to get things yeah. made. Well, know? yeah, no, I mean, that's the thing. That's what I'm saying. It's like that's doing stuff for free is just, yeah, you yeah, still, yeah. Like you're still skater, doing something. Being a skater makes you prepared to do this. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's it's honestly what you expect. Yeah, it's like, well, shit. I could like, I could make a hard line and not make the thing, or I could just, you know, or just fuck it and get to make the thing at least, you right. know. So and becoming a skate filmer, it's like, I mean, every mini VD, many mini, mini DV, DV tape that I've ever gotten, I've stolen from Walmart growing up. Mm-hmm. There's probably hundreds of them. Walmart and Walgreens. The, both walls very, very uh, convenient. Target. I heard they stopped making them. Yeah, they yeah, did. Yeah, they did. And the oh, price. The I, I borrowed my friend. You guys know Cooper Winterson? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We know Coop. Um, so I borrowed his camera. I'm switching sides here. Uh, I, I borrowed Cooper's camera and um, I bought him tapes to, to reimburse him. It was like 25 bucks for like a handful of tapes. That's what I'm saying. The prices have skyrocketed now. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. The the era, the the end of the era, you know? Yeah, and just to to think, we were stealing them when they were $12.99 for three of them. Like, this is a, this is, this is robbery trying to charge us 13 bucks for these tapes. Yeah. Insane. Um, and, and the lenses now, they're like 1500 bucks for a depth lens. Really? Yeah. Oh my god! People text me every once in a while, like, "Hey, dude, you got any line on a on a lens?" I'm like, "I don't fucking know." Um, but uh, yeah, they're insane. I um, mm. I have a VX right there. I was using a VX case as a as a to prop up the computer earlier. So I had one VX and I gave it to my friend Taylor um, to, to film with. But then it turns out that I had bar I had borrowed a camera for that Danny Brown music video I did like last winter, and um, from a guy here who will remain nameless. I like asked if you could, you know, I said, Hey, I, I got to leave town. Like, can you pick it up from, from this homie that we're both homies with? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll get it. No big deal. And then he hit me up like a month ago being like, Hey dude. So I just got that camera back and like, it's busted. Maybe got like, you know, knocked around in their closet on something. Well, it's been there for like nine fucking months. <laughs> I don't know. And he's like, yeah. Like, so what's up? 
like, well, I'm like, what do you, you know, I'm like, well, fuck, now I have to replace this guy's camera. Yeah. That, you know, so I had to do it. So I, I had to get my camera back for my one friend and now I'm giving it this one to that guy. Yeah. Um, well, so, if you got a busted up camera that needs work, you should send it to our boy, Carrie in oh, North Carrie's Reading. Thing. What happens when like that's Carrie, right? That's right. What happens when Carrie retires? Okay, listen. I do not want to talk about that. Is there comment, a, okay? like he? He, he better he better have an apprentice. He is the only person that's responsible for keeping VX skating alive. Actually, you know what? Fuck! I should hit. A, I should tell Matt Tomasello to be become Carrie's apprentice. No, he Matt Tomasello to, does does if, uh, computer if repair. Carrie stops, then VXs are the, done. they're done. They're done. He is the only person. He, in, I know, and in America at least, in America at least, he's and only- it's it's been. I mean, he has been the like. I remember fi- like reading on like Slap or something in like, like two thousand, like two thousand one, two thousand two. Like yeah, dude, for like twenty years, he's been the saving grace of of skate filmers. God bless him. He's 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 saved me. He saved everybody. You dude, know? he's man. He's he's a fucking genius, and he's a he's an angel for repairing all of those VXs. Yeah, for and cheap continuing for to cheap do so. Mm-hmm. It's and th- that's the other thing is if he went and looked on eBay for how much people are selling broken VXs for and like upped his prices accordingly. Oh my god, he could really fuck you. Yeah, yeah don't let him know. I'm, I'm yeah, trying not to let him know. Don't show this to Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> don't l- keep him humble. Keep him humble. Yeah, I was trying to get him to do a uh, video segment for Jankum for a while, but he was too humble. He said he didn't want his face on the camera. Yeah. So, you know, leads me to my next question, Colin. I'm, I'm sure you got a million questions for us. Well, I've already asked you some. I'll ask some more. I do got to go in the, in the semi-near future. Oh, yeah. No, this is usually when we start to wrap it up. Oh, yeah. We're that's wrapping actually, it up. That's actually the cue in the, um, the podcast that uh, mm-hmm. you know, we're rearing towards the end. All right. So let's hear it. What's, what's the question? The question is, is that I'm sure you have a million questions for us. Uh, yeah. So one question is, so what is something I've never been clear on? Is there any, and if so, what is the overlap slash relationship between the bees guys and you slash, is there any at all? Or just, just people that, that, you know, have like, they were, you know, kind of the prototype of, of yeah, mm-hmm. some they, of the similar ideas, similar ideas, but I feel like yeah, we get compared to bees all the time. Right, and, and they're from a different area. Everyone's like, oh, this is like bees mixed with like Tim and Eric from Adult Swim. Usually, that's what people say. And we love the bees videos. Yell exit, Russ Clark. And we love uh, Tim and Eric. Um, Yell but exit, yeah, Doug, Doug Pound. We've had Russ Clark on the podcast who's um, who edited the bees videos. And mm-hmm. I got to say, kindred spirit. Just yeah. Someone who completely Just sit in the same type of eye to eye on every single sort of view on, you know, skating and making a video. Yeah. And but as far as that relation, that relationship, you know, was just newly formed. It was just that we were just aware of each other. Mm-hmm. And they w- somebody from bees sent Fisk a video like right after they made it. So I feel like it was just so- just a sort of thing where it was just in our consciousness because Fisk showed it to me. It's one of those things where those videos are so like fancy lad is its own entity, but like the bees videos are so out of left field. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. there's it's, it's way more uh sort of outsider art than the fancy lad videos are mm-hmm. where there's still s- some sort of semblance of like the structure of a skate video and actual, you know, relative yeah skill trying to go into the skating yeah um, there was this push purely into the the abstract the abstract exactly other than that we went on tour and we met um tim olson who now runs uh friendship and stayed in wisconsin met a couple other the of the uh, bees guys like the john I call him John Kramer. I forget his last name because he played the character Kramer skating oh, yeah, and that, in yeah, one of the, the edits edit, yeah. of okay. the Seinfeld parody. And they're great guys. Um, yeah. And I I was asking him, I was like, you know, I, I was like, I don't understand why bees didn't become its own brand and try to do like weird skating like that. But Tim was pretty much like, just weren't interested. 
I, he, I, I guess like he didn't think it would work at the time. And now like he started a friendship and I was like asking him why friendship wasn't more like bees. And he was like saying like, well, at this point you guys have like out bees us. Like, I mean, tenfold. I, mean, I think, I think he's right. Honestly, I think he's right. There was a window and you guys just kind of, you stepped into the window, you know? Yeah. For better or worse. That's like, if there was a bees ish brand, it might be one of those things like, you know, you've seen old movies now. Um, they seem like really trite and, or, or full of uh, cliches, but they weren't, they were just the first time those things had ever been seen, you right. know? So when you watch them now, they seem like, Oh, this is, you know, I've seen all this before, but at the time it was so revolutionary. It's the first time those things had ever been seen, like, you know, citizen Kane or something. Yeah. yeah. That's how I always think about kiss. So bees is the citizen cane of, you know, but if it, if it came out, if they tried to make it a brand now, it might feel almost derivative of kind of itself because it's, you guys exist basically. And it's yeah. become so ingrained uh, in that sort of within this, this genre of skating, if that's what you want to call it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I pers- I think there's plenty of room, but I'm just like, like you said, commercially, who knows? Who fucking knows? Right. Um, well, commercially, there doesn't seem to be much room for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's I don't a- know. It's just oh. it, there. It seems like there is because the view counts get a lot, but it's just you don't make any money off the view counts. So. Yeah. Well, and that's the other thing is like if you're one and there's all these other things that are another, like they're not going to they're going to work harder to make sure that that one doesn't become bigger. You know what I mean? Can, they don't want it to go like this. This is for all the Patreon viewers to actually see this. Well, I wish that there was I wish that there was more because, you know, it is kind of like I think of it as like an alternative to mainstream skating. I don't know. We were referring to it as like avant nar when we first started as a Mm -hmm. joke. And um, and now we're serious about it. And now very serious. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, it's the same thing where it's like, I mean, alternative music became huge in the early 90s. As you know, you're filming a video for Nirvana and. It, the reason why it becomes so big is because all these other bands are also doing the same thing and making the idea stronger. So I wish that more people would kind of jump on board and it would, you know, it would only benefit us. Yeah, I don't think no, it would absolutely. be competition. Right? Well, I mean, it would benefit skaters as a whole as well, you know, because like you, you just want to get more. Yeah. There, there are probably more people that are creative with their skating than there are people that are like naturally born gifted, like amazing. Like, I don't know. I don't know these days. People are fucked up good. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't know either. <laughs> I, don't I was really gonna say. I, looked on I think Instagram. they're. I it's think they're a dime a dozen. Great, yeah. Man. Instagram's fucking wild. Um, <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I okay. would. Say I, I retract I would, my previous statement. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that it seems to be easier to be fucked up talented than it would be to push some new ideas. Yeah, it's just on paper, you know, somebody sees, oh, these guys are doing it. These guys have made a way to make it work with very little, very little uh, gifts from God. Right. And <laughs> yeah, on paper, that looks easier, but I, it's not as common is the thing. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I, mean, I know that, man. I'm, I'm trying to go pro. That was my goal for this year was to go pro. Have uh, you watched Shorty's How to Go Pro? Because that might help. Yeah, it's, a, it's like I haven't watched it in a, in a while. I should rewatch it. But um, it was my goal. I hit up my friend, my uh, my friend Steve, who runs DOA, the um, the uh, small brand running out of Long Island. And I was like, Steve, you turn everybody pro. Like you turn all these flow kids pro. What's the deal? Like, what do I got to do to go pro? And so, but I, I made him a deal that I would film him a part mm-hmm. to go pro. And uh, I was like, I fucking got this. What else am I going to do this year? But the problem is, there's no fucking filmers in New York anymore. Yeah. Nobody films. All yeah, my yeah. film have like moved on to working in, in like the film industry or have like quit filming or they're like, you know, they only film for, you know, actual good pro skaters and try to make a living doing it during that. And like, I'm not going to hit up Josh Stewart to be like, yo, homie. Let's get a clip. Like he's yeah. got shit to do. Right. Um, and so the only people I know, like they've got shit to do and none of like, I don't know. The kids don't film anymore. I'm not friends with anyone. So I only got four clips this whole year um, since, since July. What about and, Cooper? 
Cooper's got shit to do. I've Coop's hit up Cooper. Oh, bullshit. I've hit, I've hit up Cooper a couple times. It just hasn't worked out. It never works out with him. He's a busy dude. He's like, he's also, yeah, it just hasn't lined up. But I'm going to keep trying him anyway. Because, yeah, man, it's my, you know, it's time. It's time to go pro. Well, it's your time to shine. You know, it's my time to shine. So I need to watch how to go pro. Mm-hmm. Because it's your first love. <laughs> yeah. Skating. Yeah. <laughs> this is skateboarding. So is you my, can fulfill yeah. the dream. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm guilty. Yeah. <laughs> well, once you make that video, you know, feel free to send a VHS to us for a yeah, sponsor I'll a tape. tape. I'll send you a tape. Hell yeah. yeah. And it won't, let me, but really, I'm, I'm actually this, this, I'm trying to just like, I'm trying to do it. You know, I'm trying to, trying to get back to like, uh, basically approaching how good I was when I was 16, yeah. <laughs> which has been downhill ever since. But, um, I'm trying to just film a, a really traditional full street part. You know, nice. Dude, street. And I, nice. I, I keep trying to film ledge lines and failing. That's my problem. I'm trying to film a very conservative part here. Just the it's, lines it's, are tough. It's an exercise. It's an exercise in in humiliation. Yeah, lines but, suck, dude. Lines you gotta go straight suck. for those straight bangers, so you only have to land one trick. Lines are so fucking annoying. I know they're the worst thing. I don't know why I do it to myself because I'm not very good at. I mean, I like seeing lines. Yeah, but... and I'm trying to do a very conservative. Like maybe I would have been like a, a, a flow skater in like 99 or something. That's like the kind of vibe I'm going for here. Yeah. Um, I feel like I probably could have been like maybe am in let's say 61 before anyone knew what yeah. skateboarding was. True. Well, you know? I'm not that good, but that's what I need my part to make the impression of by being very right. selective about what I can do. Mm-hmm. In filming some things. What's your uh, dream sponsor? 99. Dream sponsor. 99. The year's 1999. Yeah, yeah, 1999. Mm. One year before you started skating. One year before I started skating. So probably yeah. like fucking, I don't oh, know. High C, Legos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same year of the Fancy Lad van. Yeah, my car's a 98. Oh, nice. hell yeah. That's fucking What sick. kind of car is it? 234,000 miles on it. Still still going. Holy I shit. Four, damn. I got a Forerunner. Four Ford Forerunner? No, a t- Toyota 4Runner. Oh, okay. I was going to say. I remember yeah. the Ford 4Runner. We can't decide whether we're going to uh, raffle off the van or try to fix it to keep it going. I think we got to get a new one. I think trying to trying to repair it is... We're just digging ourselves deeper. We're going to have to repair it again. Yeah, but the baby's only got 100,000 miles on it. I know. But she's got but, so many problems. Colin... Once again, you know, thanks for being on the podcast. This has been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you, Colin. We been really appreciate a, it. Been a big fan for a long time. Likewise, likewise. I'm excited to uh, hear about this film, this 90s music video, and yeah, whatever awesome. humongous skate company reached out to you to possibly make their video. Yeah, I'll talk, I'll talk to you guys about it. Can you just, like, stop recording, and we'll talk for another five minutes? and then? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we'll yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but also, you know, just throwing it out there, if you ever want to be involved in a project that uh, involves myself and Big Zo and Fancy Lad and Adult Swim and DJ Doug Pound and FU Crew and the Sloppy Boys, yeah. a.k.a. three-sevenths of the Birthday Boys, the sketch group, mm-hmm. you know, just let us know. Yeah, I'm developing a... Like I'm, I said, the Matt Tomasello part, I like, that would be... I would love to make... But, but this is a little different. This is... Um, this is like a... This is like, like a, a, a TV show that I, I'm developing a pitch deck right now for. Okay. So if if you want me, actually, you know, what? I could actually, if you want to be a sounding board, that'd be great. I'm around. Yeah, I've been through ten. I've never done a show. I've never. Well, actually, I have. I have pitched a show. Um, well, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit me. Up. I'll bounce. I'll throw some ideas back. And well, forth. you know what? We'll just talk to you in a minute once we stop the podcast. Okay. Yeah, you know what? Why don't we just stop it right now? You know what? To all you listeners, we're going to say goodbye. Call you want to say goodbye to the listeners? Bye, listeners. And you want? Is there anything you want to plug before we leave? I would say core strength. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. That is a good one. You're gonna you're gonna want the core strength. Just the thing in general. Just core strength. Posture. Those are the two things. Core strength and posture. Well, I mean, I can't think of two better things to plug. That's too relatable for me, actually. Absolutely too relatable. Well, you know what? To all you listeners, thanks for listening. I guess we'll see you guys next week. See you then. Uh, yeah.